Hey everybody, this is Mr. Mathlog. This lesson is uh, numerical patterns. This is lesson 9-5 in our textbook. And don't forget, all your lessons can be found at mrmathblog.com. So let's go to that site real quick. If we go to mrmathblog.com, it'll look something like this, depending on your computer screen. And fifth grade is way over here. This summer, I'm going to be uploading sixth grade, so it'll probably be right here. But here's fifth grade right there. So if we go to fifth grade and then scroll down, this is going to go right under uh, 9.4. All right, let's get back to our lesson here. So <clears throat> here's our, our common core strand for our teachers. And then our question is, how can we identify a relationship between two numerical patterns here? So we're going to start with uh, ice cream cones and cookies, okay? Because I like ice cream and I like cookies, in case you haven't figured that out yet. Uh, so on the first uh, week of school, Paul ate two ice cream cones and six cookies. If he ate the same number of ice cream cones and cookies each week for the next several weeks, how does this number how does the number of cones compare to the number of cookies from one week to the next? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the two rules. The two rules are he eats two ice cream cones and six cookies each week. Gonna use those two rules in the problem to generate the first four terms, which means the first four weeks. Okay, in the sequence for the number of cones and cookies, okay? All right, so what we're going to do is just keep uh, for the, the sequence for the number of cones is he eats two each week. So this plus two is how many he eats the next week, and then plus two is how many he eats the next week and the next week, okay? So down here is the total number of ice cream cones that he eats. So two plus two is going to give us four. Let's slide that up real quick, you guys. So two plus two will equal four. Four plus two equals six. And finally, six plus two equals eight. All right, let's do that for the cookies, okay? Remember the cookies, he eats uh, six cookies a day. So for the first day, he eats six cookies. He eats uh, six more, six more, six more. So six plus six is going to get us 12. Plus six is 18, plus six is 24. Okay, so we're gonna write um, number pairs relating cones and cookies for each week. So this is the cones right here, and this is the cookies right here. So we're gonna represent, so for this one, this is gonna be two comma six. So that's gonna be the number pairs for the first week. He eats two cones and six cookies. Okay, so that's what goes in week one. Okay, week two, <clears throat> he ate two more and then six more. So he ate a total of four uh, ice cream cones and 12 cookies. So this one's gonna be 412, okay? The next one's gonna be this pair right here, 618, and then finally 824, okay? So that's what we're gonna put right there. All right, let's just slide that up. Okay, so for each uh, number pair, compare the number of cones and the number of cookies. Okay, let's look at this number of cones and this number of cookies. So see how there's four more right there? Or you can think of another rule, it's times three. So we gotta see what's happening over here. Does it add four from here to here? No, because four plus four is eight. So how about four times three? Yeah, that's 12. Let's see, six times three is 18. Eight times three is 24, so it looks like uh, for each related uh, number pair, the second number is three times as great as the first number. So our rule is going to be the number of cookies equals three times the number of cones. Okay, here's the cookies. It equals three times the number of cones. So from one week to the next, the number of cookies Paul ate is three times as many cones that he ate. Okay, yummy. All right, let's try another one here. So to make a flower bed, John uses three roses and six tulips for each row. What rule can we write uh, to relate the number of roses to the number of tulips for any row? How many roses will John ha have after he completes eight rows? Okay, so, well, let's uh, set up a little table here. So, the number of rows, now the question is asking how many roses, so we're going to be in this row right here, how many roses uh, will he have completed after the eighth? So what we're going to do is do, uh, there's going to be zero roses in, in, um, uh, in zero columns, because if there isn't a row, this is how many rows there are right there. If there's no rows, there's no flowers, okay? But after one row right here, there's going to be three roses and six tulips right there, okay? So row zero, all right, so um, now I'm just following this pattern right here for John uses three roses, so we're going to continue to add three. So plus three, plus three, plus three, plus three. Here we're going to go for the tulips, plus six, plus six, plus six, plus six right there, okay? 
So there they are. We added three and then added six right there. Okay. So from okay, now they're they're given this is 48 right there. They gave us that. And if, if you can just keep going with the the tulips, we can keep going. Okay. This is row four. So we just go up to row eight. We go to mentally go to row five, which would be plus six is 30. Row six would be plus six again, 36. Row 7 would be plus 6, 36 plus 7 is 42, and then finally plus 6 more is 48. But they give that to us there, and then we got to develop a little hint right here. So to get from 48 to this guy right here, what kind of pattern do you see? Well, look at this one, 24 and 12. Can you see that this one is twice this one right here? Well, what if they give us this? If I multiply that by 2... That would be 96, and I know that's not 96. This one is going to be half of whatever this one is right here. So we multiply by one half, or we divide it by two, okay? So if we take 48 and divide it by two, we'd get 24. If we did 48 times one half, that would also get us 24. Multiplying by half is the same as dividing by two right there. So when we do that, we get 24 right there. Okay, <clears throat> let's answer the questions here. So. Write number pairs that relate the number of tulips to the number of roses. So we got to do the tulip numbers first to the rose numbers first. So this one says in row one, the tulip number is six. The roses number is, um, <clears throat> excuse me, three. So we're going to put six comma three. Okay, row two, the tulips is 12 comma six. Okay, and then uh, the next one is 18, nine. The next one is 24, 12. All right, let's move that up right there. Okay, so what's the rule right here? Well, can you see the number of tulips is twice the number of the roses right there? Okay, so the number of tulips in each row is two times the number of rows. And then here's a better method. Since we got to go all the way out to row eight, you guys, here's another way. The number of tulips is six times how many rows there are, okay? Or the number of roses is three times how many rows there are, okay? Notice this is two times this right here. So if we, let's go back to this, uh, this table right here, okay? So here's row four. If I multiplied that times six, would tell me how many tulips. If I multiplied uh, 4 times 3, that would tell me how many uh, rows is right there. So this little rule right here, so the number of uh, tulips is 6 times the number of rows, and the number of rows is 3 times the number of rows, okay? So after 8 rows, John is going to have how many rows is uh, planted, okay? We're going to use this one right here. We're going to go 3 times the number of rows, 3 times 8, 3 times 8 is 24. Okay, you guys, I hope that makes sense, and take care.